Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Nativity of our Lord. Our opening hymn is number 99, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 99, please stand. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So welcome to this joyous feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Every Christmas, our parish collections benefit the Clergy Trust, which provides health care and wellness programs for all active and senior priests within the Archdiocese of Boston. On behalf of myself and all my brother priests who truly benefit from the programs and care of the trust, thank you for your generosity. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. for you. 
Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelled in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy in great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder in the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness, and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. We 
please stand. Alleluia. Savior is born for us, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went out to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who's, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's readings, there's a lot of traveling being done. I also bet a number of you travel the distance to be here with family and that this parish isn't your home parish, so welcome. In the first reading, we heard about the people who walked in darkness and saw a great light. The walking in this sense is the spiritual journey of the people to whom Isaiah was writing. The people already experienced internal political conflict with the splitting of Israel into the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, also known as Judah. Another source of darkness loomed from Assyria, which pressed upon the northern kingdom. Isaiah had already warned the Israelite people that because of their own oppression of the poor and their disregard for the Lord's law, that there would be an Assyrian invasion, and it happened. But looking to the death of the Assyrian king, the prophet declares in the darkness, the light has shone, hope for endless peace, justice and righteousness has been kindled and burns brightly. Isaiah prophesizes relief for both the northern and southern kingdoms in the person of the new king who will come to the throne in Judah and will see to the reunion of the north and south and the, and the expulsion of the Assyrians from the north. The king in the line of David whom Israel saw as fulfilling that prophecy is, interestingly, Hezekiah, the successor of King Ahaz. But looking even further into the future, Isaiah speaks of a child born to us, the new king in Jerusalem in Judah. Some 2,700 years later, we see Jesus, the incarnate son of God and son of David, the redeemer and savior of the world, as the final fulfillment of the prophecy of the promised king. Today's gospel from Luke gives us some detail on how this came about. The Roman emperor Caesar Augustus declared a census of the people its purpose was to update the count of who can be taxed and, who, and also determine who's eligible to be enrolled in the military. 
During this time, Joseph living in Nazareth, who was married to Mary, but was pregnant with Jesus, decided that they needed to be counted at his hometown of Bethlehem, which is the city of David. It was the town where Joseph's ancestor, David, was born and spent his childhood. It also fulfills the prophecy that the prophet Micah made that a king would be born there whose greatness would be known throughout the world. This brings us to another journey, that of Mary and Joseph's 80-mile trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem. It's there that they arrive late at night and there's no room for them at the inn for travelers. That's when they improvise and find a manger in which they can settle for the night. It's where Mary gives birth to Jesus. A manger is, is a feeding trough and, a, and it symbolizes the sacrificial meal that Jesus becomes, which provides sustenance for the whole world. It's in this humble beginning in which Jesus is among us, Emmanuel. I started this homily by saying these readings were about traveling. The incarnation is the most significant and greatest trip of all time in which the Son of God becomes man. In other words, in the words of the late Cardinal Humberto Medeiros from a Christmas address he made 49 years ago, knowing man as only the Creator can, he knew that we would find it almost impossible to pray to and believe in a God who remained distant and aloof, or in a God who would demand admiration and would give nothing in return. But through the eyes of the faith he has given us, we can see signs of God's loving concern for each of us as individuals. This love is at the very heart of the good news Christmas announces. So Jesus is the light of the world by which our own travels through life should be directed. The angel that appeared to the nearby shepherds declared as much to them. If they needed even more convincing, a heavenly host joined the angel in saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So they made the short trip to adore the Savior, the Christ. In the 12 days, in 12 days, we'll also commemorate another group of people who made a longer trip to adore him, the Magi from the East, in which Jesus is revealed to the Gentiles. We too are invited to follow the light and adore him. Jesus did ascend to heaven, but he's also present to us in the Eucharist. He's our light to help guide us on the most important journey of all, to heaven. Now more than ever, the world needs to see the light of Christ. With horrific wars waging and many fleeing oppression, let's bring the peace of Christ to those we meet because peace starts with us and moves outward. With joy, let's bring the love of Christ back to our families, friends, and those that we encounter on our journey back home and in the journey of life. Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, for our sake was crucified, Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Celebrating the glad tidings of this day, we now reach out to God with our prayers. For the priests who make it possible for us to celebrate our Catholic faith. We also remember in a special way our priests of the Archdiocese of Boston who have gone home to the Lord this past year. May our good and loving God grant them an eternal resting place in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in poverty, may our Savior and King, born in a stable, raise them up through faith to share in the riches of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community who mourn or suffer loneliness, may they find the joy of Christmas through the generosity extended by others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they rest in his eternal peace, especially members of our Mass Intention Guild and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Father, you sent your son Jesus to a world in need of salvation. We ask that you hear our prayers through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our offertory hymn is number 97, What Child Is This? Number 97. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of man. And as our feeding, good Christian fear for sinners here, the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds are.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, and these holy unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health, health and well-being, and paying, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, your and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysigenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of our, your whole family, order your days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to, su to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to, to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel in your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and the rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of, of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Silent in the chill of midnight, starlight shines upon a lowly manger. Wonder, wonder of the ages, heaven breaks forth on do 
darkness promise of life without end for a child is born the world rejoices shepherds and angels proclaim his birth this is Jesus the God's peace to the earth, bearing God's peace to the Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. On behalf of Father Kevin and I, I I wish you a very Merry Christmas and um, a safe travels wherever you go today. And I also would like to thank all those that make this liturgy uh, so beautiful. Um, the music ministry, uh, Paula and, and her daughter. <laughs> and John DeGroda. The proclaimers of the word, 
the ushers, um, the decorating um, crew of Andrea and her grandchildren and Lloyd Gibbs. And uh, finally, Paul Beck, uh, who uh, does such a fine job um, with the live stream. Thank you. <clears throat> Bow down for the blessing. May the God of inf infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great, with that great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruins of souls. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And our closing hymn, please join us in singing number 86, Joy to the World. Sing, and heaven and nature sing.